The Book's tablets are by far the most capable of all e-ink devices. But if they're the most capable, why aren't they the ones that I always choose when it's time to get work done? At the end of the day, the Book's tablets can do too much, and it's really easy to get distracted. But that ends today, because I'm going to show you my favorite tips for turning the books into a focus device. We're going to start with the basics, but stick around to the end, because there's a few that you've probably never seen before. Let's start with the simplest, which is do not disturb which I think is probably the easiest thing you can do to reduce distractions on the device. What this does is it turns off all the app notifications and any unnecessary sounds in the system itself and any apps that you install. So let me show you how to do it. It's really simple. Easiest way I know to do this is just to pull from the right hand side and there will be a do not disturb icon right here. If for some reason you don't have that, you can hit this edit pencil and bring it back in this right hand sidebar. But all you have to do is tap that and you'll know that you're in do not disturb because you'll have this little moon icon there. From here on out, no more notifications, no update notifications. You can just focus on what you're doing. The second tip is equally simple, which is only install the apps that you need. As good as the books tablets are, they're not iPad replacements, and nor should they be in my opinion, but I'll save that for a future video. This is part of the fun of owning a books tablet is trying out all the different Android apps and seeing which ones work well on e-ink, but the vast majority of them aren't optimized for e-ink. And once that novelty is worn off, try to get those off of your device so that you can focus on what you're trying to get done. With that said, if you can't bring yourself to actually uninstall all of those apps, what I would say is use folders to try and limit those distractions. For my particular use case, I have one for junk apps that come pre-installed on the books and one for apps that I rarely use, but I don't want to get rid of yet and so I can open up those and I still have access to them but they're not distracting me on my home screen honestly I could probably clean this up a little bit by moving that into rare and get a tablet menu right and then reddit I'm gonna say I don't see reddit I want that direction and the same with drive and same assistant home google And I think you get the idea. And now you're left with a really simple application space for when you do come to your app page. You can take this a step further by installing a different launcher. The default launcher is good, but it's optimized for showing off all the things that the books device can do. And once you've got a good feel for what the device can do, focus it in on what you want to get done with the device. When I'm trying to focus, I want to do one of two things, read or write. And in that situation, the books launcher is good, but not great. My preferred launcher for focusing on the books is Niagara, which is completely free. They do have a pro version as well, but I've gotten along just fine with the basic version as it has fewer features and fewer distractions. So let me show it to you. I've curated a handful of apps that I have as favorites, and those are all I see when I launch into Niagara. It's a really clean experience, and I can still get to all of those other apps by dragging over here on the right-hand side, but I'm not distracted by them when I first load the device. So in this case, I've got a browser, I've got reader, I've got to-do list, and then I can get back to the books launcher if I need to. Probably worth noting that the books note-taking app is actually built into their default launcher. It's not its own note-taking app. So that's just something to be aware of. To install the launcher on the device, it's just like any other Android launcher. So you install the app, and then it'll prompt you to decide which launcher you'd like to use. I won't bore you with the steps for actually doing that if you've never done it, but I'll have a link down in the description that'll show you exactly how to do that. To optimize Niagara for the books, I recommend running it in A2 mode, and that leads to really snappy animations, but also really good image quality. So you can do that really easily by sliding down from the top right, going to E-Ink Center, and note that the E-Ink Center is for specific apps. So this will affect this launcher, but not the apps that you load from here. So from here, I'll just choose A2, and then you can go into more settings, although it's not gonna matter here, and you can turn off this full refresh. In this case, I'm on A2, so it's not gonna matter, but I want you to know that that setting exists in case it'll help you out in the future. I get a little bit of ghosting, but it's nice and fast and responsive if I need to slide through this sidebar, which you don't get if you leave it on normal or regal. So this is kind of the best I've found. If you haven't already set it up, make sure you have full screen refresh on right swipe. It just makes things a lot cleaner when you go to look at it. And just to reiterate, you can always get back to the books note taking app and their base launcher by just pulling it as an app from the sidebar. I've renamed mine to Onyx Notes, but I think by default it's called Content Browser. So if you can't find anything that looks like Onyx Notes, look for Content Browser and that'll be what you're looking for. From here, you can just hold on the app and rename it to whatever feels most normal to you. And lastly, in my opinion, the biggest thing you can do to improve focus on the books is by using a different note-taking app. The default books note-taking app is really impressive. It has a ton of features and it does so much, but most of which I don't need on a regular basis. 
and they really don't give me an option to get rid of those things. I just find that I get distracted way more when writing on the books than I do on the Remarkable. It's find myself wanting to cater that experience to what I actually use and limit distractions. And that's where Notable comes into play. It's a clean, simple note-taking app that's built specifically for the books. It leverages the books writing SDK, so it's just as snappy and clean as the default books writing app. So one more thing before I actually dig into Notable is that this is a relatively young app. It's still in testing and there's plenty to add, refine, and clean up. Big thank you to Olap who's written the app and then also recently open sourced it on GitHub. So if there's something you wish it did and you have have some programming skills, you can go add a PR to help improve it. It's also a great way to learn about the book's SDK and Android development in general. All right, so let's boot it up. So I can just tap here from Niagara and then I'll be inside Notable. And the default screen is really simple. You've got all of your notebooks. You have a quick add page if you just need to add something that's not unique to a specific notebook. And then from there, you just tap through on your notebooks. You also have folders if that's something useful to you. And then here you have this clean toolbar across the top. You've got four different pens, my personal favorite is this first one, and then if you tap through on each of these, you'll have different writing thicknesses. In addition to the different pens, you have highlighter, an eraser, and a lasso. So if I tap the lasso, it'll work exactly as you would expect it to, where that will select it, and then you can move that content. And then you tap to commit. You also have a highlighter. And then if you two finger tap, it'll actually toggle you to the eraser. And so then I can erase and then I can toggle with two fingers back to the previous app. This is where the app really gets handy is that you can turn off that toolbar and you can control everything completely with gestures. So I can write a sentence and then if I mess up, I can tap with two fingers to erase it and then tap with two fingers back to switch tools. This loop makes for a really nice writing experience where I don't have to accidentally worry about triggering anything accidentally. I don't have anything on the sidebar to distract me and I can just focus on writing. There's still plenty that they could improve, but the basics here are really good and I love not having anything on my screen when I'm trying to focus. The other really cool tool is this has infinite scrolling, just like on the Remarkable. From here, if I run out of space, I can just keep going as long as I want. The Books app also has scrolling paper, but I always find that it triggers on me when I don't want it to, and then the navigator pops up and it just drives me nuts. If you'd like to check out Notable, I've got a link to both their GitHub and their Discord channel where you can go download the app and also get involved. And like I said at the beginning, this app is completely open sourced and your feedback and additional PRs are welcome. So those are my favorite focus tips for the Books devices, but more importantly, I'm curious yours. Let me know the ones that I miss down in the comments. And while you're down there, you can help me out a lot by liking and sharing this video. And until next time, have a great day.